Hello everyone. Um, this is YouTube number two for September. Um, and tonight, today and for the next few weeks, we will be working with line and wash. Um, but today I'm just going to be drawing with the pen, the pen only, without using any colour. Um, not being particularly sketchy or scribbly as we are sometimes when we paint um, more structural um, subjects. Um, but with this acorn that I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to be a little bit more precise with my pen and use shading etc. Um, and I hope this week you'll do a similar thing. Uh, lots of different pens obviously can be used, lots and lots of different pens and these are all the things that you can actually make a line with so you can close in on that and have a look and maybe try out all these different things if you wish. Um, but today I'm just going to use one of these um, water resist pens and I'm going to use a size 4 to begin with um, but at the same time if I have time I'm going to do a little bit with um, water soluble as well and I've got some other water soluble pens here that, that I can use with you um, or in fact you can use a dipping pen with bottles of ink so let's just make a bit of a start here. Um, this is a sort of medium sized one and if I hold this pen on the side I get quite a, a fine line and if I want to create some shading I can do this and that's called cross hatching. If you have just one single line like that, a little row of them, that's hatching. Going back the other way creates a deeper impression and so therefore that's called cross hatching. So that's holding my pen on, on the side, um, not too tightly, sort of, but not too loosely either. I've, I've got a certain amount of control over it, which is what we need today. Um, but obviously if you hold your pen higher and press more deeply, um, you're going to get a stronger line or in fact change to a, a pen that's got um, you know a, a, a thicker nib at the end and I've got various sizes out here so on with the glasses and let's have a start make a start what you've got to do when you're painting something or drawing something like this is to actually start in the front and create um, a nice focal point by pushing something going on in the front and then working further back within the subject. So I'm just making similar marks to the ones I see in this acorn cup and it's got a deeper side this side, stronger side so I'm putting a little bit of shadow in there. Acorns are amazing this year, they're really huge. In fact, this is even bigger than I'm actually drawing it. I, don't, I think it's gonna look a little bit ridiculous if I actually paint them as, as large as they, they actually are. And there's some shadow here that's been cast from a leaf, so I can pop a bit of shadow in there bit more this side and it's got some markings so this is sort of semi detailed I'm being slightly scribbly because there's quite a lot to do but you can actually if you've got more time and you you prefer to be really detailed there's you know that that's up to you you can put as much strength and detail in as you wish really but um, when you're not putting any colour on, you've got to get all the darks and lights going on um, with your pen. There's another 
They often sit in twos, I find. So I'm not actually putting every single mark in exactly as I see it. I'm, I'm partly just giving the impression. But being more detailed than I would be if I was going to put a wash on. So this is a nice way to get back into doing our some line and wash and it's really 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 relaxing just to sit and draw sometimes without having to worry about the fact that you're going to actually put colour on at some point. Right okay so that's a start and actually there's a bit of a leaf here so I'm just taking sections of this little branch of acorn that I've got here. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just taking what I want from what I can see in front of me to create a nice little drawing. And it's up to you where you put the shading in and. But the idea might be to actually work light against dark and dark against light as we do when we're actually painting. There's another acorn here. And I'm using um, a cold press paper because I actually quite like the fact that it helps me to get broken lines. You can use a smooth paper if you, if you wish. You get sort of harder lines and more solid lines when using a smooth paper. So it's really quite different to work on. But I quite like this Fabriano because it's not too textured, but it's textured enough to give me a nice broken, broken line. So there's a leaf looking at me here. So I'm putting the central vein in first and then it's going to help me to get the shape that I need. These are very shapely leaves, so it helps to get that central line in, vein in first, because then you've only got one side to worry about before having to go on to the next. So it just makes life simpler all the time. Make everything simpler for yourself. And of course, we can put all the other veins in as well. This is a very good time of the year to, I decided, to do something like this because there's, um, it's all getting a bit shabby outside and things take on a really interesting sort of um, look about them. Things get spikier and start falling about and looking quite shabby and so it becomes a little bit more difficult to to paint things like that. So I thought, it, you know, with the line and wash, this is quite a good way of actually 
portraying some of the things outside without having to worry about the colour. But next time we will be using some colour and we'll be going on to something more structured. I'm thinking maybe a building. slightly more scribbly it's a very shabby looking one behind there you can pop a little bit of shadow on the leaves I'm keeping the shadow on the leaves a little bit lighter they're quite shiny and giving the emphasis to the acorns rather more One's got a little empty cup sitting beside it. If you make a mark that you don't like, I'm not going to say a mistake because I don't like the word, um, but if you make a mark that you don't like, just carry on, go, go, just go over it and just keep going and you'll find that it will just become part of the picture and, and disappear. But if you remember the rule of drawing everything that you see in the front first, it is going to actually help quite a lot. Made that one a little bit lighter because it's going away out of the picture. So I'll, I'll draw one more leaf and then I'm going to do a little bit with a water soluble pen as well. So the tree is absolutely laden this year with acorns. Last year I had very few, if any at all. So obviously the hot weather is something that the oak trees like. Keep that one a little bit lighter, I think as it's going off and away. It's a little bit of shading here, perhaps. Bring my stalk through. This is actually really quite enjoyable. I've, I've had um, quite a nice week doing some various drawings that I'm going to show you in a minute. Just makes a nice change to just draw. Right, okay. I'm going to change now to the water-soluble pen, of which I think most of you got, the Tombow pens, which has a thick end for filling in and a fine end. in black and also sepia. You can get all different colors, but I'm today just using black in my work. 
and you can either use a, an ordinary brush to blend and bring all the lovely colours out. Can you see the blue that's coming out of that? So that's for blending. Um, also, some of you have the art pens that we bought many moons ago, which are also, they have inside a water soluble cartridge and a converter to change it so that you can fill it with whatever ink you like to use. There's a fine and an extra fine. And the other thing that we can use to blend, and especially if you're on holiday or outside and you don't want to take brushes and water and all the rest of it, again, you can see all the lovely colors coming out of there. Um, you just wipe this clean, it's full, filled with water, and you can take just two things out and a pad, and you can do lots of different drawings outside. So I'm actually going to just do, perhaps I'll just turn it so I get a different aspect, perhaps. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, no, didn't like that very much, it doesn't matter. I'll go for the same thing again. Um, so I'm going to actually go with the art pen. But they'll do different, uh, the, each, the fine and the extra fine will do different things for you. But in fact, the line that you make is going to be very similar to using the pen that I was using before but in fact um, the Tombow pen is slightly thicker I think and you have to hold it on its side to get the, the lighter marks that you might might need so I've got to think about the fact that I'm actually going to blend this one so I'm putting marks in that I know will blend quite nicely when I come to doing that. this quite loosely. The, the ink runs really well with these pens. They take a little bit of getting used to but I do quite like them. But I think in fact they've been discontinued so people who haven't got one um, would have to use the Tombow or any other water soluble pen that you have. You can't get these anymore, but I do know several of you have got them, so, and I've had mine for years. But I am actually going to, I've noticed in my art um, catalog, my supplier has actually got a, a rather nice looking art pen, fountain type, fountain pen type, Pen that I'm going to actually send for to see how much I like it and it is less expensive than these were so I'll be letting you know the situation on that if you do a lot of line and wash it is quite a good thing to have Oh, I don't know, there's 
nice acorn there that I hadn't noticed before. It's got quite a long stalk, that's a bit different. Sitting there. become a little bit autumnal now, hasn't it? And so there will be berries and all sorts of nice things to, to actually concentrate on soon. Berries would be very nice to, to do, I think, with line and wash. So, especially things like blackberries, you know, because they're quite detailed and lend themselves to this technique. Right, I think I've done enough there to to blend and see see how that goes. So a nice pointy brush, maybe start at the top so that you don't work over yourself and smudge. This is the fun bit. So I hope you'll try both techniques this week so make sure you have some toweling there to actually control the water on your brush because it too wet is going to flood just a little bit too much and you lose your detail that you maybe want to keep But think about the light against dark again. And change the pressure on your brush. If you want it to be particularly dark, just bear down a little bit more. And they have blemishes, so you can dot around a little bit with things like this. Anything that you've drawn that you like the look of and you don't want to, to sp lose it, just make sure you don't touch it. So with something like that, where you've got light and dark, just dot it in and it will give the impression of texture. Each one is different to the next, so treat it that way.
Sometimes it's quite nice to leave things just drawn and blend other aspects of the composition. So there, there are lots and lots of different things that you can think of to do with, with using a pen. So see, see what you can come up with. But there we are. Those are my two demonstrations for this time. But I also want to show you um, other things that I've done this week. Here we have a, a completed blended acorn. So that was done with the Tombow pen on the textured paper. I found some sea holly on the beach, so I created that um, using a size 3 uni pen um, and gave it a little frame and used the cross hatching for the shadows. So that's quite a detailed drawing, so it took a little bit longer, so if you have something like that to do, take your time over it. Um, I have plumbago in the garden, still blooming. So I sat outside and did a drawing of the plumbago. And I didn't put so much shading on that at all because it's a nice light subject and wanted to keep it just quite white and light. I also sat underneath the walnut tree and this is smooth paper this time, so you can see what I mean about getting darker lines. And um, I used a size 4 uni pen that I just used with the acorns. Um, this is another tree that's laden this year with loads and loads of walnuts. So I just sat in the shade underneath the tree and did that drawing, which I enjoyed. Um, did a sea holly again, just blending this time with the Tombow and in class this week I did a drawing of a teasel and blended it. Another thing that you can do if you want to do um, something with a little bit more structure, um, that's just a little photograph that I took in Scotland with some posts and rocks and a sheep in the distance. It took me ages to get it to stand there, right in the middle of my posts. Um, I think you can just about see him. But the other thing I did here, um, for the background hills, I just used a pencil to draw those in and to keep them soft and so they didn't really blend and put a little tiny touch of some green gold on the top. So a little bit of colour sometimes might be nice. For cards, I've done several different little sketches and given them a little frame. Um, they need to be cut down and used as cards perhaps. Uh, a sea holly again, some honesty, which is really always good to draw. Um, that was the top of a hollyhock. These are nice at the moment because they're all falling apart and broken up and so you could see the little berry inside. Um, so they're quite nice to do if you have them. And that was just a, a little bit of a hydrangea that was drying up. And so as you see I've been busy this week but thoroughly enjoyed doing the drawing and actually I hope you will too this week and I'll be showing you um, next week um, similar th things but using a more structured subject and and washing in some colour on the top. Um, this is a good time to collect some nice interesting things from the garden though so maybe start with with something like this and then we'll go on to more structured things. Um, so I hope I've given you some ideas of things that you can do and will keep you going for the next two weeks. When I will be back on the 1st of October um, demonstrating some more line 
but with water as well. Okay, so have a good two weeks, everyone, and look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.